Efforts Prospect 2030 Replicant Workshop. Uh, today we will focus on sustainable transport and the workshop were organized by our, one of our uh, Croatian partner Energy Institute Hrvoje Požar. Thank you very much for Matija for organizing this session. Uh, I hope we will enjoy it today and I hope afterwards we have a brief discussion about uh, some issues on uh, sustainable transport in our countries. Uh, so I give a floor to our first speakers here. Uh, I have team, uh, Mr. Bruno Zidov, Tomislav Kop and Matija Vajdic to introduce national and regional aspect of the sustainable transport and concrete immobility actions done by uh, uh, IHAP itself. Thank you. Um, okay, hello everyone. I hope uh, you can hear me well. Uh, I will just uh, share my screen. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes. yes. Ah, perfect. Okay, uh, I would like to to welcome everyone to to the webinar on behalf of the Energy Institute Hrvoje Požar. Uh, the topic is um, uh, very intriguing in terms of uh, achieving climate goals, as you probably know. Uh, the European Commission has announced the implementation of the European Green Deal, whereby the target for reducing emissions by 2030 would need to be increased from 40% uh, defined under the Paris Agreement to 55% compared to the 1990 levels and by 2050 achieve the full uh, EU climate neutrality. So. Accordingly, uh, we have recently made analytical basis within the Institute. We have modeled a scenario of uh, higher emission reductions in which uh, climate neutrality is uh, ultimately achieved by 2050. Uh, so we have identified, identified uh, additional measures and uh, necessary investments uh, to reduce emissions to almost 100% in 2050. So uh, I will show you now the results of the energy model in terms of projections of final energy consumption. Uh, as you can see in the graph on the left, uh, according to the analyzed scenario, consumption is expected to decrease by approximately 35% compared to 2018, with the largest reduction expected in the household sector. This is uh, marked in yellow color. Uh, what is important to mention in, in the context of today's webinar is the fact that the transport sector remains the largest. I, can you hear me? I think somebody muted me. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you, yes. Ah, OK. Uh, <laughs> so changing the trend in, in the transport sector is uh, the biggest challenge. As you can see, the blue area uh, remains relatively broad in 2030, even with the implementation of the extremely strong measures uh, recently communicated by the Commission through the sustainable and uh, smart mobility strategy. Um, consumption in terms of transport in 2050 will amount uh, to about 60% of the realized consumption in 2018. This is primarily due to the replacement of vehicles using internal co combustion engines with the more efficient electric vehicles, especially in the passenger road transport segment. So the, the, the share of electricity will be around 30 percent. Uh, as far as biofuels are concerned, in the short term they will be used primarily in road and coastal transport and from 2040 they are also expected to be used in, in air transport. Uh, a significant contribution to, to 
decarbonization is expected also from hydrogen, primarily in heavy freight transport, and also the use of so-called e-fuels or synthetic fuels is also expected, the share of which will be which will be around 15%. Uh, so, in the context of uh, today's workshop, uh, generally speaking, when we talk about energy efficiency measures in the transport sector, so-called ASI uh, approach describes the three key policy types which seeks to improve energy efficiency. Uh, firstly, the, the avoid policies are aimed to reduce the travel or the need for travel. Uh, mainly, they are achieved through, for example, land use planning, uh, urban design or changing uh, working arrangements, for example, remote or teleworking. Then we have uh, shift policies, policies which are aimed to increase uh, shares of trips made on more efficient modes. This includes uh, promoting like uh, cycling, walking and uh, public transport as well as discouraging uh, single, single occupancy vehicle use. Uh, therefore, this policy type is often described in terms of uh, energy per passenger kilometer or per ton kilometer. Uh, finally, Improve policies includes uh, technological improvements to increase vehicle and fuel efficiency. So this includes adopting uh, more efficient fuels. So uh, concerning the year that is behind us, uh, local and regional governments responses to the to the COVID crisis will therefore be critical in in shaping future mobility patterns. So grasping opportunities for changes in travel routines where they are sustainable and, and mitigating possible uh, adverse effects. Uh, so special challenging challenges await us in the in the context of e-mobility. Um, my colleague uh, will tell you more about this uh, this topic. So I will uh, thank you for your attention for now and and leave uh, floor to, to the Thomas Wolf. Thank you, thank you. So I can think maybe I, I can uh, continue. So after after Bruno gave us an overview on the national level and on the national contexts, uh, I will go now maybe down to the regional or local context since the EHP provides the support uh, to the on the national level to the uh, government and also to the regional uh, or local authorities, uh, I can say we can uh, give uh, how how we see the issues on uh, immobility development on the national, but also on the regional level, and compare uh, how we see what are what are the differences. Uh, I will I will give just a few slides. Uh, moment. Okay, so I will give just a few slides on uh, uh, mobility, and uh, I think those slides can be a basis for the discussion later. So uh, when we talk about immobility, we are actually talking about a functional system that's consists of three key elements. It is electric vehicles, charging infrastructure, and also IT that connects all together. Um, given the context of the, today's workshop, so giving a regional and local perspective, it makes sense mostly to talk about uh, infrastructure and maybe less about electric vehicles and IT systems. So, to begin with, let's brief take a look on the infrastructure for for uh, charging of electric vehicles and see what what we can conclude from this 
a few screenshots. Uh, this is the screenshot from the plug surfing platform and we see this is the rough number of the charging stations across the EU. And if we go, if we zoom a little bit, then we see more and more stations are, uh, charging stations are appearing. And this is the another platform, the plug share. Also, I think we can see this in Italy and Croatia. Uh, I think a lot of charging stations and this is from another Croatian um, mobility service provider. Their map we can also see. So, some of them uh, are also occurring uh, on every map. It depends on which roaming platform is included the charging stations. This is a map of charging stations from our power utility. And we can see that they are mainly on the main corridors and some urban places. Now we see the screenshot from the from the south here on the split domain Shakanti. There are several several charging stations. So I just give these few screenshots to see what we can conclude because before few years when we were talking on immobility, we were saying, OK, we need to solve the chicken and egg problem. There's no infrastructure. Nobody wants to buy electric vehicle and nobody wants to, to deploy infrastructure because there's no electric vehicle, etc. And now we take a look after a few years. There are many projects uh, infra for deployment of infrastructure supported from EU funds, CEF funds. So we have a lot of infrastructure we can say there is an extensive network of EV chargers across the EU that allow all trips for electric vehicles, even for those with a short range. But uh, what, what else we, that we can conclude is, or question, ask ourselves, is it sufficient and suitable to supply energy to all electric vehicles that will grow strongly in coming years. So we saw in Bruno's projections in upcoming years, we can expect more and more and uh, uh, very rapid, rapid change in uh, the structure of fleet. So what we are, what, what, what we can conclude uh, that uh, now the transit charging, we can say it's solved and there are many egg projects they are, uh, the, they are in process now. And, but when we travel somewhere and we have a lot of electric vehicles in one place, they will not charge on this infrastructure. They need destination charging. And this is something that we can uh, speak in regional or local level. So, Destination charging uh, is uh, something that, that that we need to develop. Uh, I mean, destination charging is uh, at uh, shops, at restaurants, and also in apartments. Uh, and also uh, charging at home and charging and work. So on the national level, important is fast charging infrastructure and on this destination charging, we are talking about slow charging because in future we can expect that this fast charging will be uh, much more expensive than slow charging. So the majority of charging sessions will be slow charging. And on the national level also, we are talking on legislative and regulatory framework and on the regional local level, we can maybe talk on uh, regional and local administrative measures. So now I will I will give you how, how we see in EHP when we uh, discuss about the mobility on regional local level, what 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 should be done and what should not be done. So first of all, charging station deployment. We think that it is wrong that the local, the municipality wants to deploy the charging station and to provide the mobility services and 
to to get to be involved in this uh, business. So it's it's business sector, and we think that uh, the local and regional authorities should support private sector to deploy charging stations and to see what are the barriers, to see what are um, what 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 is discouraging for private investments uh, for private investors to deploy charging station and to to operate with them. So to to identify those barriers and to see how they can they can support the private sector. Also, there is um, I always write education and promotion. For example, I mean for uh, destination charging for uh, let's say um, hotels, restaurants, and other service sector uh, accommodation providers. Uh, to they need an education and to see what are the benefits of if if they uh, deploy one let's say small charger on the in the premises because it is not a big uh, big investition it's not it's we are talking about maybe 1000 euro for one slow charger but we need to promote it and to educate uh, service sector why, why why they should uh, install chargers so the next thing is uh, electric vehicle purchase subsidies so regional and local level they should not go in this way and also but but on the other hand they can uh, strange the ev advantages to do some uh, positive discrimination with some administrative measures it means uh, creating a low emission zones or uh, uh, free parking zones, so on, etc. Some si similar measures. And if they uh, if they have budget, any budget, it is better to to introduce electric vehicles in their own fleet. And the last one, providing or co-financing of the mobility services. So uh, the regional or local um, authorities should not uh, start businesses like bike sh electric bike sharing of uh, a, a car sharing or anything like that but they they should support also the private sector and uh, provide education and promotion uh, how, how they can promote how how they can do that these recommendations and what powers the local authority has. I think this is a good topic maybe later for for discussion and to hear from all of us the opinions and to, to see is it maybe is it possible for local authority to give a concession to give to location and give concession on I don't know how many years and give it to the private sector to build, to install the charging stations, and could could this be the model or something else? So I think these are basics for the later discussions. So I will I will stop here now and give words to the Matia. Thank you. Tomislav, I hope you can hear me yes. well and that you can see the, my slides. So I will uh, uh, actually move from this, let's say, local level to as local as possible. And this is how we actually uh, deal the e-mobility at the premises of, of the Energy Institute, uh, Hrvoje Požar, or in general, the whole actually sustainable mobility even though we all drive fossil fuel <laughs> driven cars uh, so from the very beginning of the actual development of e mobility in Croatia uh, the Institute has been of course actively involved uh, both through different types various types of study analysis and discussions um, conferences everything that has to do with with this uh, analytic part including quite some 
European funded projects in, in this in this field we 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 finalize and some of them are still active. Uh, and of course, in practical application, uh, uh, we try to follow the latest, let's say, relevant relevant technologies. We are situated in uh, quite close to the city center of Zagreb, a bit south, uh, uh, and this is our actually. I don't know if there is a pointer option. Yeah, there is on this sh small image. In front, you can see uh, the very first actually charging station for electric vehicles in city of Zagreb that was installed in 2011. So that was like 10 years ago. This is a bit smarter, a bit smarter classic, let's say, plug or two plugs that 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 actually filled quite a lot of cars in in these last 10 years. Uh, and since then, of course, the, the Institute has been using uh, the first generation electric vehicle for its its own needs. Uh, nowadays, we, we, we realize that we have to do something because I mean the, the building that we uh, that uh, we own, the Institute owns, was built in 1975 after 25 years. There was a first refurbishment, uh, uh, relatively deep retrofit of building was done uh, uh, in 20 something years, yeah, 21 years ago. Uh, and uh, at that time, it didn't, of course, involve e mobility as part of, uh, as the integrated part of deep retrofit of building. However, nowadays the time, time has come that we include the complete uh, in this complete renovation of the the building that will happen uh, that will uh, the project started actually and it will happen next year uh, so so the 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 retrofitted building will will include quite a lot of different i mean various technologies of course all uh, all concerning this green green aspect of of, of uh, everything that is let's say uh, by technology uh, trending in a way uh, will be integrated in these buildings the picture in the future is of course still blurry because we are uh, working on the design at the at the moment so uh, but for sure it will do it will include yeah, from PVs on the roof, uh, also the vertical ones on the facades, other parts of facades, of course, which which where it doesn't make sense to to put PVs will be uh, fully recycled. Uh, of course, new isolation will be installed and uh, windows, doors, and everything else that is some kind of classical. Uh, however, we will also try to not try, but we will uh, include immobility. Uh, Energy Institute has its own nine parking parking space in front of the, uh, uh, the pre our premises. Uh, so there is, of course, this prerequisite to, to the for the installment of new charging infrastructure. The planned immobility, of course, in part of the investments within the project is is based actually on the following three components. Uh, this is the first one is the network charging station with uh, eight charging points, which are these classic charging points of up to 22 kilowatts per connector, but fully digitalized and, and connected with all the other uh, elements of the buildings that will be that will also be digitalized. So the dynamic load balancing is, of course, stressed out as the, the most important aspect because we, of course, don't want to have 100 kilowatts of, of peak power <laughs> because because there are there are, uh, five six cars being charged at the at the same time so so this will be of course a smart device that will that will smartly charge the the cars uh, we will also implement one complete v2x so we equal to everything smart bidirectional charging solution system where which consists of course of bidirectional charger uh, the device is able to use the power from the car to to uh, to you to be used uh, from the uh, by the building. Uh, so, for example, if there will be a big requirement by the the heat pump that will use shallow geothermal energy, then it will be the car will be able to uh, will be as a classic battery actually, and then of course. Of course, when it's not used and when it's used, it will it will <laughs> be used. But when it's empty, it will. If there is solar 
power available, it will be charged and so on. So so all these things will be will be integrated. The whole V2X smart bidirectional charging solution also includes uh, besides the charger, the, the mobile lab, the software behind it, of course, and the whole backend platform. And uh, of course, on the other side, we will also get the suitable suitable uh, electric vehicle that supports this technology. The whole solution will provide, of course, several key features, uh, which will enable the integration of e-mobility systems, so use and charging of the electric vehicles with the overall energy management system of the Energy Institute. Of uh, the whole, I mean the whole building, including the photovoltaic power plant and and the battery storage that will that will also be installed. Uh, so this is just uh, uh, hope you will all be able to that we will have at least <laughs> uh, uh, I, that we will have uh, uh, that we will actively participate. Let's say in 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 other other also projects where where you as partners that we will jointly uh, work on many other projects. So you will, you will after the year 2022 2023 that you will be able to see all these things uh, live. Actually, uh, this would be of course a, a pleasure that that we can we can we can all of course host you in the new retrofitted building and uh, we will it will be our pleasure also to of course demonstrate demonstrate this technology that we will implement in the uh, in the building. Uh, so that's that's about it. Of course, we are doing a lot of other different uh, projects in terms of sustainable transport. Uh, however, we didn't have much time. Actually, we didn't allocate too much time for for all of them, but uh, we will be glad, of course, to hear from the rest of the presenters what they're doing in their regions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, maybe we will leave uh, all the questions uh, for later if you have any. Uh, now I would like to give a floor to Mr. Martin Buchan from still, uh, Split Dalmatia County uh, to tell about the carbonization of transport in Split Dalmatia County. The floor is yours. Thank you all. Uh, just a minute. Can you see my presentation on full screen? Uh, you didn't? Not yet. OK, first of all, I want to thank Matija and uh, my colleagues from Energy Institute, Hrvoj Požar, but uh, for, for invitation in this uh, workshop, but from the beginning, uh, uh, at first I want to say uh, it was one guy in Institute Hrvoj Požar uh, more than 10 years ago. His name is Philip Preg Prebeg, it's grain scientific and uh, he died uh, and uh, he was uh, 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 working the institute and uh, he is the one of, of the guilty men who, who infected me with uh, sustainable transport and immobility. So uh, at first this is the the beginning uh, where I came from. It's County of Split and Dalmatia. Uh, it is the some several pictures that you can see the 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 area of our county because it, it is not possible to 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 have the meeting uh, uh, in, in split i hope so very soon that it will be and uh, this is our story about sustainable transport so uh, first of all this is the our county uh, uh, this is some excuse me uh, martin we cannot see the presentation moving it At is, least from, from my side. I see also on my cell phone that. Uh, 
I'll just a minute. I will stop the sharing. And I will do that again. From the. I think it's okay now. It's okay now. Yeah. Okay. And this is something that I speak at the beginning. This is that picture, and I hope so that you've seen everything. Uh, in this uh, uh, photo slideshow, you you can see uh, uh, our county, and this is the map, and also some uh, information. Uh, we have three different parts of the of the our county. From the one side, it is our islands and uh, from the other side our uh, hinterland area and the uh, area near the sea so we are the larger county in the, in the in the croatia uh, also we have territorial structure 16 cities and uh, 39 municipality uh, the center of the county is the city of split and uh, the popul population is uh, about uh, 454 inhabitants now so it's a little bit higher uh, but that was the uh, uh, during normal year uh, during the during the, the the winter time during the summer time uh, it is double about 1 million people with the tourist uh, every week was in this small area so it is uh, uh, very high challenge for all of us to organize uh, management of the transport because you must invest a lot of money uh, in, in infrastructure and also in the buses and every other other uh, uh, point of the transport uh, like you use that infrastructure whole year but you're using that only four or six years in, in, in in full potential of, of that of that transport system that we have. So we are starting at the beginning in one project. Uh, what already guys said, uh, uh, we 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 using uh, cross border cooperation between Croatia and Italy, and that project it was intermodal. The, the general goal was the promotion of intermodality of the area of Split Dalmatia. Uh, through the creation of the pilot network of, of intermodal hubs. Uh, the, the specific object with its pro promotion of the potential intermodal hubs through the interactive promotion of the electric char charging station as an element of the infrastructure foundation for the reception of the main elements for uh, of intermodality, such as the car sharing system of electric vehicles. The project duration was from the 2015 and uh, 2016, and it was implemented. Uh, the, the project was a uh, uh, larger duration, but uh, that was only for the electric vehicle station that we speak. The pilot activities are creating, uh, carried out through program of uh, ISIN connection, application for analytic, analytic monitoring of the movement of the tourists in the county. It was the first time that one county used uh, uh, big data analysis uh, uh, in in counting of the numbers of, of the people that are in the inhabitants or of one county and also we make application for the county public bus lines based on the database and the county public and etc cetera, etc cetera. and also we uh, make analysis to to have a program of the co-financing the transport cost for students and uh, school pupils uh, especially in the hinterland part of the county of Split in Dalmatia. So the, uh, with the, the mainland between the uh, Iceland them, themselves, based on the program county of Split in Dalmatia, it was co-found uh, co increased frequency, namely county co-finance additional fast line on relation Split Sholta and uh, Split Hvar after that and we developed that but it is uh, co-financing from the national level so we are uh, stop support that kind of uh, co-financing but it was in 2014 
And after that, uh, as already said, it is the, the Split Dalmatia County want to have a detailed analysis of the traffic flows between different parts of the county to use this as a basic uh, to improve traffic connection, bus lines, connection between uh, Iceland's boat, ferry and the bus scheduling, etc. The following information indicator uh, indicators will be provided that we collecting on more than 50 points of the interest, the aggregate number of the people in certain time intervals passes by the defined locations, cities and uh, our islands. Uh, we collect socio demographic characteristic of the group. And uh, we, we are checked direction of the movement football statistics all with the aim the, of defining a flexible and efficient public transport. As I already said, the bus on demand, car sharing, etc. Uh, and to check uh, uh, the needs of the tourists and uh, try connect that with the needs of the local population. Uh, future more uh, period of uh, two years, uh, we, we, we have to, to after that to use web interface and it will be very interested for us to collect all of that data for, for the future projects. So how is it will be go? It is uh, very interesting for all of us, especially it was the, the beginning to, to understand uh, customer behavior and where the people are going, especially the frequency when when they are going and uh, where and how many days they will stay on one. Uh, uh, touristic point of the interest and uh, also we, we have very, very good uh, uh, information from that uh, study that it is already implementing some our uh, several different uh, studies of the of the on the county level and after that we are uh, as i already said we we are make public call for all of the people that they are interested to want to have electric char charger station uh, after uh, finish that public uh, calls uh, more than 30 different People from the different sectors uh, are called on that public call, and uh, uh, we we are uh, use that heat maps analysis uh, to check and found five location. Uh, one of these uh, location, it was uh, three was uh, hotels. The first one was uh, uh, airport of Split. And uh, the the far away uh, uh, it is Hotel Miramare in Makarska. It was very very useful for us because uh, we see um, few weeks after that that one uh, company that have uh, rent a car uh, took ten electric uh, cars and put uh, on uh, uh, airport and they are rent uh, that cars. A lot of people from uh, Scandinavian area using that uh, services and uh, it was very interesting because they use every of that five electric charger station that we build up in in that uh, in, in in that period. So after that it, it was very interesting for all of us. It is the beginning it, it was uh, excellent for the promotion of the e-mobility in, in on the county level we organized the the, the first uh, electric rally with electric cars uh, in, in the county of split in dalmatia we have more than 15 different kind of the cars and we call uh, news newspapers we call tv and uh, people from the tourist agency and the office to to use and the electric cars the first time that that have that they have experience and uh, also to promote all this activity in, in the area of uh, county because uh, we are very strong influence have from the tourist sector and as you know they mentioned uh, everything is visibility in, in the international network and it was the several years ago uh, from the e-roaming platform where you uh, 
Puni Hire, it is that is collected from the Slovenia and Croatia, but uh, the the improvement of this platform is uh, now that she is larger and uh, have uh, Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina chargers, and uh, it is use, uh, useful uh, for the owner of the electric cars to to using that platform can. Uh, see and make reservation of the filling station in Croatia, in Slovenia, and also in other countries. And after that, that we are finished that project, we have the step up project also cross border between Croatia and Italy. We have uh, different activities. Uh, one of them is promotion of the multi multimodal passenger uh, uh, transport, passenger mobility facilitate access of the offer services and the uh, combination aspects of the transport and the tourism in a global context and uh, also capitalization of intermodal project efforts and results. Uh, so in the area of Split and Dalmatia, we, we in that period uh, already has about 10 charge extension for electric vehicles, but uh, all that electric vehicle station was in the coast of the county. And we didn't have uh, developed the infrastructure for the char charging uh, electric vehicle uh, station in, in the other parts of the county. So, uh, we, we, which is it uh, limits uh, the possibility of the using such vehicles for the tourists and the locals. Uh, development of the necessary infrastructure installation with, would establish the initial network necessary for uh, on hinterland travel in the hinterland of the county by electric vehicles. So also we make a public uh, calls. Uh, it was very interesting for all of us and uh, we we develop uh, five electric vehicle station, but also we are making studies uh, to, to see the relationship of the location of the cycling route and the traffic network of the County in Split and Dalmatia. So we choose five. We, we we have six potential location, but we have money only for the five. So we are using that every 35 kilometers. Uh, when you see this presentation and presentation before, uh, the the result that uh, the, the red one that you see on, on the slide is uh, our high road, and uh, on the high roads is uh, build up the fast charger station. But uh, all this station that we are implement, it is uh, 22 kilowatts. So when you see the, the presentation before and now, uh, we as a local government working uh, development of, of the charger station uh, has uh, have, um, already said the, the, the guy from the Institute Harvoy Požar. Uh, also in this pilot integration, it was uh, some other uh, integration traffic data testing service through the platform with updating of data from the traffic sources, installation smart charging station uh, equipment with the user authorization software, uh, integration with the data collection port from the charging station and the collection, uh, collection and connection of the GTFS data integration with the web platform. So it was very challenging for all of, for all of us to collect all of that data and uh, uh, build the network from the different part of the sectors because the rails and uh, buses are not connected and every of them are trying to develop uh, his platform. But uh, with this project and other projects that, that we are working on them in the county are a little bit uh, uh, make uh, uh, push them to, to collaborate uh, uh, more. Also, we, we, we have uh, some challenges in, in, in that area that I already said. It is uh, that uh, non exist infrastructure for the setting uh, uh, up filling station, a uh, charger, and also impossib uh, impossibility of the obtain an electrical connection from our national uh, electric service company. It is called named HEP. And the uh, collection of the GTFS data, as I already said, in digital format in general. So we, we don't have some 
public data data center from all of that data that uh, company are give for free. And also it was very interesting to us. For us, it is integra integration of the point of uh, interest with the portal platform and it was once some of them problem in the operation of the back office too. I don't know. I see that presentation are not going on, on my computer. It's going we, on the computer. We, oh, OK, yeah. OK, it, it, it's OK now. So the, 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 this is the promotion. Our county are perfect. Uh, Blaz and Koboban development of the e-charger station are the necessary infrastructure create the basis for the development of the potential intermodality and multimodality through the transport by creating uh, pr prediction uh, preconditions for uh, strength the same the smart and green mobility sector uh, possible car sharing and bike sharing services and reduce re reduction emission from the transport sector. Uh, other activities, uh, I'm the, 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 the project manager of uh, master plan of the traffic development for the functional region central Dalmatia. The, the purpose, uh, purpose of drafting of that uh, functional region transport development master plan is to establish the existing and future needs of the region that affect uh, traffic demands. Also work on the project uh, Sutra. It's, we are now finished the tender project uh, of the public cycle system in the cities of Solin, Tril, Sin, and the municipality of Klis at six location. And each location there will be one of info pool with charging equipment and two racks for the parking electric vehicles and four racks for the parking classical vehicles, as well as the implementation of the charging station for the electric vehicles and the boat in the county of Split in Dalmatia. It will be in the uh, port and the city of Split. So it will be very interesting for us to, to, to see how is it uh, developed the electric boats and is it necessary or I I if they have interest to, to, to to have that both in our area. Uh, after that, uh, I collaborate as associate partner in one project. It's called name uh, Interreg Mediterraneum Remedio, and it was the develop in the city of Split several chargers, uh, several station for the electrical bikes. And after that, on the with the European money agglomeration, uh, the the project choose a bike worth about thirteen. 0.6 million kuna, it's approximately about 1.8 million euros, uh, continues the establishing and develop the public uh, cycling system in the urban agglomeration of city of Split as an uh, alternative form of the public transport. Through this project, it is now in, in uh, public calls uh, in the area of agglomeration, we will have 41 new station with 242 cycles and will be set up and two bicycle roads it will be established one in Trogir and uh, one in the city of Split. It is very interesting how to use a small amount from one European project just developing uh, uh, imagination uh, just to slice and that it will be finished. Mattia? Yes that's that's okay. Yeah. okay. OK, and uh, after that we are working uh, and collaborating one project to join SECAP. Uh, we, we developed the SECAP and also uh, capacity of the local authorities and uh, we will promote uh, e-mobility and uh, bike sharing system in, in that area, Iceland of Braj. Uh, also, we, we collaborate in, in ACTA, Alpe Adria Green Transport Alliance. Uh, we speak about and uh, also with uh, understand the role the clean transport energy transition and uh, provide the tool the carbonization of the transport. The workshop uh, it's sharing experience from the Austria, Slovenia and Montenegro related to the green public procurement in the transport sector and the infrastructure planning required electric and hydrogen vehicles. At the local level, the county is a member of fuel cells and hydrogen uh, joint undertaking, and we also prepare one project uh, for Horizon 2020 Swordfish. Uh, also, we finish Interreg Meg 
project, uh, it's complete project that encourages the development of the economic uh, competitiveness and innovation in the green and smart mobility industry uh, through the regional and transnational cooperation between uh, research institute and the public sector and also enter a, a pre-nowship. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, sorry of uh, my time. Sorry. That's OK. Uh, I hope we can skip some coffee break. I hope you all don't mind about this because it's very interesting to hear all, all about your good practices. Um, so the next presentation uh, also please remember to hold on with any questions uh, by the end of this workshop. We will have time for this. And our next presentation will be about the carbonization of transport. Uh, oh, sorry, the road to success in mobility in another uh, Croatian county, Primorje Gurski Kotar. I hope that I pronounced that remotely close. And yeah, it's Dr. fine. Dr. Vedran Kirincic. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello to everyone. And first of all, thanks to the, my colleagues who invited me to present in this webinar. So you'll have to have your coffee in your hand while watching my presentation as we don't have much time. Hopefully it will be interesting. So let me just share my screen. Do you see the presentation of the presenter view, please? Yes. Should they swap uh, screens like this? It's not the full screen. We can see the full screen, yes. OK, so uh, as we, we have good introduction from my colleagues on the national level and then Martin from southern part of the Croatia, I'm going to talk about the uh, county of Primer Gorski Kotar. As you can see, uh, this is uh, the county that is also uh, in Adriatic Sea, but uh, a bit northern than, than uh, the one that Martin uh, talked about. As um, you can see on the left hand side, uh, we are quite motorized, so above the both national and EU average, and therefore we have a good potential for um, introducing and promoting new technologies such as e mobility. In Premier Gorski Kotar County, there are already many um, charging stations. Here you can see uh, the one. Uh, the, the figure with the uh, charging stations uh, in the both uh, Premier Gorski Kotar County and both in Istria. Uh, although there are many areas which are still lagging behind and mostly the charging stations are either um, in some uh, important uh, national corridors or in uh, urban areas. In Croatia, in Premier Gorski Kotar County, there are around uh, 60 charging stations and uh, several hundreds of uh, EVs. Here there are some figures. Uh, as expected, the most interesting categories for buyers are those that were subsidized. So these are either light uh, vehicles uh, or, or M1 categories of so personal vehicles. The ones that were actually subsidized by the Environmental Protection and Energy Efficiency Fund, but also uh, there are some some uh, groups of people who are trying to promote the the vehicles on uh, local level, and I'm going to talk about this later. When you compare the county to the rest of Croatia, there are some interesting facts. As you can see, around six percent both in area and population, but um, a bit higher number in. EVs, uh, both for electric, uh, pure battery electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles, and also a number of sockets and charging stations. Almost 20% of uh, points are here in uh, Premier Gorski Kotar County. Also, when we compare to the rest of Croatia, a bit better numbers related to the ratios of uh, vehicles that gravitate to, to certain location or to, uh, to a number of sockets. So. Uh, although we have a uh, quite good perspective, uh, still there is there is uh, there are some some parts, uh, especially the city of Zagreb, of course, and uh, the, the areas in which um, the, the electromobility already 
uh, has been developed, uh, such as uh, in the rest of Europe. So uh, up to them, we have to strive. Uh, here are some projections based on the actually some national projections. And this is a basic scenario in which we still have a number of charging stations to be uh, placed and also uh, the, the expected number of vehicles to grow. Uh, although these numbers are quite moderate, uh, still this is quite a big challenge for local uh, government to, to somehow plan and to support the development of the network. As you already know that uh, Thomas Lam mentioned this uh, question, either it's a chicken or egg. Uh, we surely can say that um, if there is no uh, sufficient number of publicly available charging stations, people probably won't buy electric vehicles because they still have this range anxiety uh, that they won't have enough energy to, to come to their desired destination. Therefore, uh, continuous effort should be put into developing the network of charging stations, but also to, to support the development of public charges, uh, of private, private charging stations, because this is quite a big um, share of, of the stations in uh, other, other developed countries. And there are some projections that actually uh, the slow charging on uh, slow charging on smaller powers uh, is the the solution for some of the areas. Uh, in Premier Gorski Kotar County, there are several several projects related to immobility. E some of them I'm also involved in. So this is firstly Enermob and Enernet Mob. These are two uh, European projects which gather around. Uh, either five or 15 uh, partners and uh, the aim is to to develop uh, some solutions to promote to test vehicles to to build so-called pilot actions in order to to connect uh, part of uh, european countries to be able to to travel with electric vehicles from from one point to another without any any issues uh, of course that this is uh, excellent opportunity for the involved partners to gain some knowledge and also to disseminate the, the knowledge in the local uh, community and also wider. So this is NRMOB and uh, some some results as you can see the vehicle and also six six uh, points with charging stations in the in the county. And another project that I mentioned is NRNETMOB, which uh, has even more partners from the whole Mediterranean area. Uh, now I'd like to talk a bit about the city of Rijeka, which is the capital of the Primeregorski Kotar County. As you can see here, there are many, many projects undergoing, but the, the ones that maybe are the mostly visible to the uh, to the people uh, living in the city is the e-bike sharing system, which is actually a sharing system of, of several locations and e-bikes being available to the citizens. And as you can see the map with uh, these red lines, it's quite used and even not uh, only in the city center, but even wider. Some of you who know the area, this is the, the Opatia Riviera and ho here also uh, some some other uh, cities uh, located near the city of Rijeka. So we we see that this is uh, these are also uh, interesting uh, possibility for people to use such e-bikes. Uh, also related to the number of sessions, as expected during the the last uh, lockdown uh, last uh, spring, the the highest number of sessions and. Uh, it goes uh, lower as the the possibility of traveling was was opening, but uh, as we we heard from uh, Tomislav, there are some measures that should be definitely implemented. And another example on the city of uh, Kirk is maybe even better to show what should and could be done. Also, a couple of uh, months ago. Uh, the electric scooter rentals uh, service came to Rijeka uh, with, with uh, scooters floating around the city. Although uh, at first it was a bit strange because uh, the city of Rijeka is not flat. It has 
uh, many hills and maybe some people were reluctant to the idea of renting a scooter but now as we can see they are quite used and m practically on every corner you can see the scooter uh, so i believe that those of you from from uh, the the rest of european countries are familiar with this concept this is not nothing spectacular but it's interesting for us and they also opened another city the city of osiek a couple of uh, days ago so it's, it's going to be interesting to follow the development of the the program and to see how this is going to be accepted by the citizens i believe this is good because it opens um, market and it shows people that there is uh, alternative in comparison to uh, private uh, privately owned cars and to public transport so uh, now a couple of slides related to the uh, island of kirk this is the with the island of Tres, this is the biggest uh, Croatian island. As you can see, it's a couple of hundreds of kilometers away from from uh, big European capitals, so it's a good uh, car destination, and therefore it's quite attractive as it also has a bridge connected the island to the to the mainland. Uh, with around 20,000 uh, locals, it goes up to. 120,000 people in summer season and therefore all the systems and especially transport system are are really interesting to, to be monitored in this island uh, as you can imagine the, the the chaos let's say in the during the summer and how does it go with the parking slots with with uh, traffic and so on so the, the island of Kirk has a strategy from 2012 related to the 2030 strategic aims and zero emission island. Uh, it's multidisciplinary strategy and the idea is to minimize as possible the energy, go uh, energy needs and the rest of the energy to be supplied by renewables. And important part of this, of this uh, agenda has of course the traffic because it's quite uh, extensive in the island as there is no other industry but tourism and so uh, mainly uh, locals are using either traffic during the, the whole uh, season during the whole year or uh, especially during the summer season there are, uh, there are many uh, tourists coming with with private cars it's also in the island there is no public transport system so when we talk about uh, mobility uh, the, the island uh, has defined the strategy to go into uh, direction of e-mobility. So uh, the municipalities, there are seven, seven municipalities in the island, um, build the, the charging uh, network of charging stations of 12 charging stations. And uh, the, the whole uh, procedure was done plainly. So uh, the, as the opportunities arrived by by financing, so did uh, projects developed, and uh, the idea was to to show the citizens. As uh, I, I used the Tomislav slide from the beginning of the, this uh, webinar uh, to show how was or it was not done, how should be done. So the idea here was not as Tomislav recommended to support private sector to deploy the charging stations, but the municipalities took the project on their own and uh, developed. Uh, each charging uh, one charging station by by municipalities was uh, placed and this is the beginning in the next uh, phase and now we are talking about the the, the ideas uh, the idea is to actually to have many charging stations in many locations in the municipality and here definitely the private sector would be involved but to start with it was done by the municipalities also uh, the municipalities uh, took uh, electric vehicles, so the EV float was built in order to promote to be ambassadors for the for the citizens uh, to show how uh, it could be done. And they are using this; uh, they have actually Volkswagen apps. They are using the vehicles to come to the city of Rijeka, which is around in one direction, around 50 kilometers. So it's it's good. Uh, there is no range anxiety and they charge in the city and come back to the island. Also related to the education, I'm going to talk about it later, but on the whole island in other sectors such as waste management and 
and water resources management there is a strong initiative to educate uh, locals especially in in high schools and elementary schools uh, i also participated in a couple of workshops related to education and the idea is to raise generations that are well aware of the potentials and opportunities and they uh, are motivated to preserve the nature in the island this is the the original the initial charging stations uh, network uh, in the island of kirk as you can see these are quite uh, short relations from the, uh, the uh, destinations from the from the uh, Omishal, which is uh, near the, the, the bridge to the Bashka, it's around um, 50 kilometers. So, so definitely uh, there are enough. Uh, uh, there, the, the network is quite, uh, quite good and quite uh, dense to be, to be charged. But uh, we definitely have to observe that uh, during the summer season, as there are many uh, vehicles, especially from foreign tourists with electric vehicles, there is maybe uh, sometimes not enough uh, parking uh, spaces with uh, charging stations, so uh, the network should be developed further. So uh, when we talk about some trends, of course, during the, the 2020, there's a, there was a lockdown. The uh, summer season was not, was not so good, so there is definitely going to be uh, not so good numbers in comparison to 2019, but definitely uh, the trend is uh, ongoing and it's going to be positive. Another interesting project in the island is the conversion. So the idea was to show the locals how a new, uh, a new, new, uh, maybe new businesses, new SMEs could be established related to, to conversion to some additional added values in, in mobility, not uh, only necessarily uh, related to some high tech, but also to, to people who are uh, skilled in some mechanic, electronics and so on. So the, the local uh, utility Ponikve took one uh, classic IC vehicle and uh, turned it, converted it to EV. And this was the project also funded by the fund. Uh, also, the analysis that we did related to the transport system showed that um, in, com in parallel to development of uh, e-mobility e e in the island, the sector of renewables should be developed as we aim to have the majority of these vehicles and in, in one uh, scenario, the, the full fleet uh, fully charged by the energy gained from renewables. Therefore, we need to uh, inform people not only to develop a public uh, public uh, um, uh, public uh, power plants such as uh, windmills or or uh, P PV uh, solar power plants, but also to have the integrated uh, PVs on the roofs, and also to people to rationalize their energy needs in order to to be active participants of the smart grid. Also, one one um, final thesis of one student who did a smart grid simulation on the island. It's necessary to continuously monitor the whole system. Uh, the colleagues from from the institute, of course, know this. To to be able to monitor, to analyze, and to uh, control it in in real time. Uh, in during one project, we also did with one SME development of the of the mobile app in order to be able to, to provide to the, especially to the foreign tourists, a mobile application in which they'll have all the locations of the charging stations for EVs, for, for electric bikes, and also to have a map of, uh, of uh, charging stations and, and uh, bike routes, as there are more than 600 kilometers of bicycle routes on the island. And uh, the, the uh, the public uh, publicly owned project is also the bike sharing system on the island. As Tomislav mentioned, now after a couple of years of experience, they are trying to uh, to switch to the uh, to the privately uh, managed system. So they're going to give uh, to one SME to to um, operate the system as they. Uh, 
they own then don't have the capacity either people or knowledge how to operate the system and definitely it's going to be better to to cooperate with sme who is specialized in this so definitely a good good uh, example of of practice how it should be done maybe to build it on their own but all, then to to with the private company to manage it to be more successful in promotion and everything that goes with modern technologies um what's what's uh, also important in uh, immobility support and uh, development of uh, strategies is to have good strategic documents here i gave a couple of examples of what we did for the island of kirk and also from primary gossi kotar county so these are actually underlying uh, documents and strategies that define all the upcoming projects related to the mobility and continuously be able to attract additional funding either from national or eu sources and to uh, to serve as a as a agenda for uh, not related to to any current situation but to to have this as a program for this let's say this decade of mobility um, also during the the uh, end of last year uh, in in the conference in the island of kirk we started the, this uh, program that we called mobility and transport arena uh, in order to educate to disseminate to talk about uh, current issues about uh, challenges opportunities in mobility and transport uh, sector and here i moderate this series of webinars and also i i'm thanking thankful to have uh, as you can see bruno here uh, then martin was the the panelist and also uh, tomislav now now uh, it's matia matia's turn to, to join me in one of the next webinars and definitely this is a good way uh, from me personally i i believe for the for the others of participants to to share knowledge and to somehow uh, actively participate in this in this really interesting sector that's gonna uh, from my perspective that's gonna be uh, for the next 10 years very very hot uh, so uh, in the example of the Premier Gossi Kotar County and especially the island of Kirk uh, this is uh, the recommended methodology as I see it so uh, to create a long-term vision to integrate uh, parallel to, to mobility to, to develop uh, renewable energy sources programs to build a network of charging stations so to solve this issue of chicken or egg also to to educate to, to attract funds to continuously communicate with the uh, involved stakeholders in order to um, somehow attract them and uh, involve them in the processes as soon as possible so when the time comes to make some decisions uh, you will have support from the local either from local government from local community to be able to transfer this knowledge which should arrive from um, from people who are involved in the area who, who are uh, in this um, in this um, sector experts and then to be able to somehow uh, disseminate the knowledge to the ones that are making decisions. I hope that this presentation was interesting to you and I'm open for collabora collaboration. Once more, thank you for your time and attention and I'm uh, glad to join the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I see one question in the chat, but um, mm -hmm. let's uh, maybe leave it for, for, for later. Okay. Um, for the uh, because our time is uh, very slowly moving, uh, so um, now the next uh, we will fly to Bosnia and Her Herzegovina uh, and hear about sustainable mobility there. Uh, Miss Medina Garic, please. Hello to everyone. I'm here. Just a second. I need to screen share. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello to everyone. My name is Medina Garic and I work in Lear Evolution in Banja Luka, Bosnia and Herzegovina. I am a Master of Science of Environmental Protection and uh, thank you for inviting me to be the part uh, of this event today uh, to present you the achievements of sustainable mobility in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, just to say at the beginning, you are a couple of steps ahead of us of seeing these old pre presentations. You are already in the field uh, and you will see our achievements here. 
just shortly, uh, Lear Evolution was founded in 2003, and uh, we implemented over uh, 60 uh, sustainable development projects in the fields of uh, environmental protection, energy efficiency, renewable energy, waste management, uh, sustainable mobility, circular economy, and tourism. Uh, well, uh, as you all know, uh, in the field of sustainable mobility, we used uh, these uh, guidelines for development of uh, SAMPs, uh, this updated edition. And I will just skip all these steps because this is all known to you. Uh, so let me just say that uh, LEAR uh, is a pioneer in the field of uh, SAMP development in Bosnia. Uh, we implemented the Chestnut project uh, in the Danube Transnational Program, uh, where we developed uh, the SAMP for uh, Banja Luka city for the period of uh, 10 years. Uh, we were in partnership with 13 partners, and uh, the project started in, uh, at the end of 2016, lasted by uh, mid-2019. The VUT, Vienna University of Technology, was uh, responsible for all these educational sessions for some development. Uh, this picture is from Weitz, as you can see, and I think I saw the participant from Weitz there. So, <laughs> um, In the Chestnut project, we uh, drafted uh, 12 SAMPs. Uh, and uh, there was these pilot actions uh, that are related to bike sharing, e-mobility, multimodal transport plans, and uh, infrastructure cycling paths. Uh, so regarding concrete actions uh, of LIR, uh, we developed uh, some for city of Banja Luka with the clear vision of an efficient, safe and sustainable transport for all citizens of Banja Luka. Really short one, but <laughs> getting to the point. Uh, we set uh, three uh, overarching goals, active mobility and car independent lifestyle, eco and safe city, efficient city. And uh, we set priorities that were focusing on uh, public transport usage, usage of bicycles, and to increase the uh, number of pedestrians. I am going really quickly through these uh, slides since <laughs> we didn't have really uh, any uh, pilot action uh, in this, uh, this project. Uh, so uh, the, we set, uh, set up indicators uh, for each of uh, overarching goals. And we uh, jointly, in collaboration with city authorities, we measured current state um, of, of uh, public transport, uh, bicycle walking, uh, tickets, uh, uh, and we set targeted value to be achieved for the 10 uh, year period. Uh, so, as well for the second and third overarching goal, we did the same. Uh, and uh, these, this was related to CO2 emissions, uh, harmful gases, noise level, number of tourists, um, of transport models, you can, you can all see it in the table. Uh, so, uh, we uh, developed a set of measures uh, that will be implemented in this uh, uh, period. And uh, these uh, measures uh, are in line with the set goals and priorities. They are, as you can see, related to uh, improvements of public transport, improving uh, accessibility to the central zone, development of cycling uh, projects. Uh, I can just say that, uh, here, uh, in, in this exact project, we didn't have uh, the pilot action of, of uh, purchasing equipment. It was because of this uh, depreciation method of, of calculation for this uh, first um, uh, DDP program. Uh, and uh, But Banja Luka is dedicated to the sustainable mobility since uh, it already has, as you can see, we set up uh, that uh, the number of bike sharing stations uh, will increase from uh, 4 to 14 until 2025. And now we already have six uh, locations 
uh, for uh, e-bike uh, system and uh, 40 bikes. So I think this would be achieved in the, in the set uh, time frame. And as well, uh, we have uh, electric uh, vehicles uh, chargers in the city center. Uh, so when coming to Banja Luka or coming from uh, Serbia to Croatia, you can stop here and, and charge. Uh, and this is all, uh, this was not uh, as part of the project. This is like a dedication of the city to the sustainable uh, mobility. After defining all these uh, measures, we set uh, responsibilities of the actors and uh, financing sources uh, for the implementation of uh, the sum. So, uh, LEAR was direct partner in this uh, project, uh, Chestnut, in the Dynamic Transnational Program. While for SMILE project, uh, the uh, city of Gradishka was direct partner and the uh, city has uh, known that we had this experience in, in project, in some development, uh, contracted us as external expertise for uh, administration and technical support to the city. Uh, the project lasted for 36 months and the uh, city of Gradishka, as I said, was uh, the partner here in this uh, project. Uh, so, uh, we started the development of uh, some starting with uh, current situation analysis and problems. This was all defined jointly with uh, uh, city staff and city authorities. Uh, we defined the uh, mobility scenarios, calculated all these uh, shares of uh, walking, cycling, uh, public transport or car usage. Uh, so we developed clear vision for the uh, city of Gradishka, uh, a city of sustainable mobility based on efficient, safe, environmentally friendly transport for all actors that contributes to economic development and health improvement. Uh, overall goals, uh, we set here two goals. Uh, it is efficient and safe mobility and ecologically safe and developed city. Uh, as well as uh, for previous SUMP, uh, we uh, measured uh, indicators, uh, current state and set up target value that uh, is agreed uh, with city authorities in order to be achievable for the 10 year per period. Uh, so the first indicator was related to public transport, bicycle travels, walking, uh, you see all other indicators and, and set targets. For ecologically safe and developed city, uh, second indicator, uh, it was related to gases, noise level and number of visitors, tourists and average time for traveling. Um, we defined measures. Uh, with city authority staff uh, in line with uh, their financial status. Uh, so uh, you can see that uh, measures are to improve mobility, improve public transport since uh, they only have, they do not have a city line, lines of public transport, but just uh, uh, connecting rural and urban parts of the city. Uh, they do not have a bike sharing system and uh, they would like to develop it. Uh, specifics are that they want to have specific one bus line to the uh, airport, uh, since uh, Mahovljan airport is the nearest one. And as you know, it's, it's uh, connecting this part of the, of the Bosnia with uh, other parts of the world. Um, and as well, a specific one, was linking Gradishka to Eurovelo uh, route that is passing nearby. Uh, as upgrade of the smart of the SAMP, we developed a smart mobility uh, plan for city of Gradishka. This was an additional project activity, and uh, we involved uh, Faculty of Technical Sciences Department for Traffic uh, Novi Sad Serbia. Uh, as you all know, smart mobility plan uh, presents like one step beyond the SUMP and it presents clear action plan for the development of transport and uh, mobile system in accordance with the principles of sustainability, but accounting technical, institutional and 
financial and environmental aspects. Um, for the city of uh, Biedina, uh, so this this was developed slightly different. Uh, uh, I had experience in this uh, development of uh, some sport Banja Luka and Gradiška, and uh, association of cities and municipalities of uh, uh, Bosnia uh, and Herzegovina was uh, published a call uh, where I applied and I was selected as a participant to uh, Giz Samp boot camp organized in Montenegro in uh, uh, May 2019. Uh, so uh, this was organized by uh, Giz in order to uh, create the experts pool that uh, are able to support development of SAMS in the Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, North Macedonia and Serbia. Uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, GIS supported development uh, of SAMS for uh, cities Bijeljina and Sarajevo and municipalities Zavitovic and Travnik. Uh, so concretely for the city of uh, Bijeljina, uh, where I participated, uh, the SAMP was developed for a shorter uh, time period so for five years, uh, this year states uh, 2019, but uh, it's for five. <laughs> the, those were uh, the baseline uh, data uh, set, uh, set up in 2019, but the time plan is uh, five years. Uh, so uh, city itself uh, created coordination group and uh, they were slightly more active and participated more in the SAM development than, than the staff uh, from uh, Banja Luka and, and uh, Gradiška. So I'm not saying that they, there weren't any cooperation before, but these were a uh, really dedicated um, group of people because association of cities um, encouraged them to participate more. And uh, jointly with GIS, they provided administrative support. Uh, we had uh, regular uh, meetings where we involved uh, citizens, NGOs, companies, and utility services uh, companies. Uh, and we started with the on-the-spot on meetings. And afterwards, because of this uh, situation, we had uh, held uh, online meetings. Uh, as a first step, we questioned uh, de uh, developed a questionnaire that was distributed and uh, filled in uh, with uh, approximately 10% of the inhabitants of the uh, city. Uh, so a vision for Bielina uh, is slightly longer than the previous two ones. So Bielina, a city tailored to each person, open to application of innovations in sustainable mobility and development of uh, non-motorized and low carbon transport, a city of healthy and safe living and movement that provides all citizens different mobility opportunities according to their abilities and needs. Uh, we set uh, three goals, uh, safe, inclusive and functional city made to match every person, a uh, place of healthy and comfortable living, uh, smart solutions and innovation in the function of sustainable development. Uh, this, uh, as you can see, they, um, they are always uh, are, um, mentioning this uh, every person uh, for all because they are at the border and they are always experiencing these border crossings. Uh, so from uh, other people are coming to the city from other countries. Uh, uh, so uh, measures for uh, uh, some for Bielina were developed according to strategic pillars and there were uh, in total 25, 23 measures in, uh, divided in six um, strategic pillars. So integrated spatial planning and urban mobility, non-motorized traffic uh, in accordance with pedestrian and in accordance with bicycles, uh, public city transport, uh, use of personal cars and city uh, logistics and uh, freight traffic. So city logistics uh, is exactly because of those uh, large trucks uh, that are crossing the border. Uh, in Bielina, there is as well just uh, one uh, bus line and it's not really regular. Uh, it's uh, just connecting some uh, pupils that uh, must uh, go to school. So uh, they are uh, 
set these measures to uh, develop uh, public bus lines. Uh, and uh, they are having in mind uh, the uh, age of the buses. So they uh, will maybe, if the funds allow, uh, purchase uh, new buses or maybe these electrical ones, but <laughs> that's, that's for them to decide. Um, so, uh, as said, <laughs> we didn't really have this um, uh, terrain uh, actions, uh, even though these cities are dedicated to sustainable development. So, I think this would be the next phase for us uh, to set up uh, much more uh, bicycle stations, uh, bicycle paths to, to uh, set up an infrastructural uh, uh, commodities and uh, to have some more uh, e-vehicles and uh, charging stations for them. Uh, and uh, just to say uh, for Kirk, Kirk, I like the, the marketing, <laughs> so electric, uh, but signing the Kirk, uh, uh, pointing the name, that was really marketing hit. Uh, so I think that we will have this exchange of experience in the future. So our contact details for um, any collaboration, we are always interested and open. And uh, we, as uh, mentioned, we have over 60 uh, projects, international projects. Uh, our staff is uh, with uh, high ed higher education and expertise. So you can contact us uh, for any <laughs> transfer of knowledge and, and possible future collaboration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it is very interesting to hear that uh, some countries are on a different stage uh, in the development of sustainable transport. And this uh, is why this workshop is so needed so we can all exchange experience and and learn from uh, one another. Uh, so thank you again. Um, you. The next uh, presentation uh, will will be about smart mobility and mobility hubs. Uh, good practice from uh, um, City of Vites and our presenter, Mr. Rafael Bramreiter. Hello. Hello. So I'll share my screen. Um, thank you very much for the invitation today. Uh, this is the wrong. Okay, um, can you see the screen? Yes. Yeah, okay, um, my name is Rafael Bramretter. I'm working at the Innovation Center of White, and I will uh, talk today about the topic smart mobility and mobility hubs. And I will show you some good practices from the small city of White. So I also represent the city of White today. Um, yeah. Um, both the city uh, of Vites and also the Innovation Center of Vites, we are also um, interested uh, in cooperation uh, for new projects. And um, as my, also as the previous speaker uh, already mentioned, we also was, was part in the Chestnut project, and I'm uh, happy to see the um, the things happening in in Bosnia and Herzegovina and also in Banja Luka. It's very interesting. Um, the city of Vites has about uh, 12,000 inhabitants, but also 12,000 employees, which is a very good thing. Um, we have also 4,000 students, but this also means that we have um, about 11,000 commuters every day. And this is um, a small challenge or a, a challenge for the city of Vites and the small city of Vites. Um, so this is the topic we have to deal with, and for us, um, every car in the in the city center is is a problem which we have to solve, and we are working on on possibilities um, to reduce the the number of cars in the in the city. And um, Weiz is located uh, near to Graz, which is the capital of um, the region of Styria in Austria. And we are um, located in the eastern part of Austria. And uh, Whites has the motto um, City for Living, Stadt zum Leben. Um, 
um, what I um, have prepared for for this um, short uh, presentation today is first um, some mobility hubs um, we have established in the last year and also the also some smart mobility um, uh, possibilities or some um, good practices which is the white spike um, which is e-bike and bike sharing um, system then our eco sharing system in white and also the VASTI, which is a call shared cap. And um, some of these um, things are established within the project Impulse für die neue ODF White, um, which is funded by the European Union, um, by the fund of uh, European, also the European Fund for Regional Development and also the, um, the region of Styria. Um, two uh, mobility hubs uh, are established within this uh, EFRE project. And additional, but not as part of the project, um, a train track for passengers was, was established, which is going throughout the city of Whites. Um, and also a cross down route um, is established um, uh, uh, through the city of White. So um, there's a new uh, road which is going uh, straight to the city and should help to reduce the, um, the commuter uh, um, traffic. Um, the topic of the project um, was, the in, uh, was to establish information, communication and mobility hubs. Um, this means the, that we are dealing with environmentally friendly mobility offers, um, the support through uh, information and communication offers, um, smart regional and location development, um, focus on the ODF, which is the uh, crosstown route, and the north of Whites, and also new regional and also new regional center for sport, leisure, recreation, social activities for all generations, which is more or less a new uh, hotel, uh, which a focus on sport and leisure, but also a student campus. And what, what is also important for the city of Whites is the creation of quality of life. Um, other project aims, which are not discussed later on, um, are the visualization of new offers for mobility, uh, the diffusion, also the to diffuse heat islands uh, throughout uh, through smart urban greening. So also um, heat heat islands are a topic for the city of Whites, and also to reduce these heat islands. Then the use of uh, various press and public. Uh, relation tools, the development and establishment of a service app. So um, we have established also a, a new app for our bike sharing, uh, which I will show later on. And we have also established a GPS based visualization of cycling, walking, walking and uh, leisure, leisure routes. Um, we have the topic how to, to use space um, in the city. Um, on this um, slide, you can see the new uh, cross down route, which is going really straight ahead uh, throughout the city. And um, for us, it was important that um, the people have enough space. So there are, um, there's a, a large part is for the uh, cyclists and also the pedestrians within the city. But also the greening um, is very important, as you can see here, the tree, but also this um, green stripes um, next to the to the new um, um, railway is is very important. Um, but also um, a space for the cars is very important. So all these topics are uh, mentioned. Um, the first um, mobility hub is the Whites North and surrounding um, mobility hub. Um, this is a, a more or less a bike and ride uh, park, parking space um, next to this new hotel and the, and the campus um, of the students. And here we established um, next to a sustainable planting concept, also um, bike boxes um, 
for for commuters. Um, we have our uh, e-car sharing um, system. We have also e-car charging stations um, for charging uh, possibilities. Um, the VASTI, which is the, the um, call shared cap, um, and also a bus stop and a, a railway station is, is near to this uh, e, uh, bike and ride uh, parking uh, space. Um, this is the second uh, mobility hub um, we have here uh, on this uh, on the right side. There is a new um, a new uh, bus stop um, for the regional um, for the regional buses, and here are um, the the new um, railway station, um, which is also. Also very important. So we have bus and and railway um, next to each other. Additional, we have bicycle parking facilities. Uh, we have two eco sharing uh, cars. One is 200 meters away and one 600 meter meters. Um, we have again the Vasti, um, the bus and the uh, railway station. Uh, and this um, waiting area is 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 covered. So. Um, if it's raining, it's very important that the people don't get wet. Um, we have also some information points um, where the people are uh, get informed about culture and sports, um, which is not so important at the moment because it is not possible in Austria. Um, and we have also a bus terminal. And again, um, we have a sustainable planting concept where I will show you later on um, some other pictures. So here is a picture from the um, mobility hub in the in the north. Um, here is one from a drone. And uh, on this uh, place, we have the, the car sharing car. And here is the um, infrastructure for for E cars, um, load the e cars. Um, here is a picture from the greening. Um, for us, it's also important um, that butterflies and bees um, get back um, some space in the city. And this is a butterfly and bee meadow. Um, here is another picture. And here you can see also. Um, the, the entrance of this mobility hub um, and here are some space for people which are uh, with a reduced mobility. And this is um, a slide from the um, mobility hub uh, in the city center. And as you can see here, there's a green stripe, um, which is also similar um, to this uh, butterfly and bee meadow. And we have also a greening of the of the uh, railway track, um, which is uh, also which is also now throughout the the whole uh, city and along the cross down route. So this is a, a photo which it, which is not um, up to date. And here you can see also some mobile trees, which is also maybe some innovative what uh, in the in the topic of. Um, greening and um, heat islands. So these uh, trees um, are special trees which need um, not so much space um, and which are mobile and which can reduce um, heat islands. Heat island. And here again a photo from the um, railway track um, and the greening of these railway tracks. Um, and now I will show um, our examples of the white spike, the eco sharing and the Vasti. Um, as I have already uh, seen today, um, all regions are uh, dealing with the same problems and trying to solve it by similar um, projects. And we have uh, also, um, we are also um, dealing with these topics and have similar solutions. Um, so sustainable mobility is a top priority in Vites. Um, we have um, established um, 
many mobility concepts and action plans, and we've also created a SUMP, um, but also a long-term obligatory and structured bicycle traffic concept, um, where one very important uh, topic is the is an extensive network for bike paths. So to um, give the people the space for biking, but also um, to establish a numerous opportunity to rent a bike, um, a e-bike or a normal bike. And um, here we have created our white bike um, station network. This uh, white bike um, system um, is a bike rental system with 14 stations uh, at the moment. Uh, one is um, in a neighboring uh, municipality and we have 120 bikes at the moment. Um, these bikes are available 24 hours a day, um, but not in the winter. Um, so just uh, from, uh, from, from spring to autumn. And the municipality is currently working on a relaunch um, of the bicycle system um, with the idea to, to make borrowing uh, much easier um, and this should also be supported by an app um, and it is also important for the city that a couple of hours should be uh, free of charge. Um, there are more information about this, but I'm not allowed at the moment uh, to, to tell you more about this because we have planned a, a press release in the next days. So maybe next time um, or in other projects, we have the possibility to show you more about this. Um, the next one is the eco sharing. Um, at the moment, we have three eco sharing uh, cars within the city of Weitz. Uh, two um, Renault Zoe and one Hyundai Kona. And here you can see our mayor and the two guys which are um, the organizers of this um, eco-sharing. Um, the eco-sharing is also well established. As I mentioned, um, the electric car were purchased and made available through the association Evergreen Eco-Sharing, uh, which is the association of these two guys on the previous picture. Um, this eco-sharing started with just one car in 2015. Um, and after four years and about 100,000 kilometers, um, the car was exchanged in 2020. Um, the problem with this car was that um, it was also uh, it was just possible um, to get about 100 kilometers at once um, without uh, a new load. So it was not up to date and it was exchanged. Um, currently, there are around 60 members who use this um, eco sharing regularly. Um, so there is more potential and it is also a uh, new that uh, we, we became two new cars in 2020 and also two uh, new um, stations. Also, so the, it is more distributed now, the eco sharing, and it is now possible for more people to reach this um, in, in about uh, 200 uh, meters. Um, what prices we have um, at the moment, it is possible to use uh, the, the car by a price um, of uh, 5 euro per hour, but also by 40 hours um, per day. And this includes uh, for the Renault Zoe's uh, 300 kilometers per free or by the Hyundai Kona 150 uh, kilometers per free. And the idea of this eco sharing is um, to um, contact the trend towards uh, second cars, which is a big topic in Austria, uh, but also to, to contract uh, some first cars. So there are some people in white, uh, which now has no own car and just using um, the eco sharing. Um, the next uh, point is the VASTI, the call shared cap. Um, it was founded 
in uh, 2002. And it is also an important piece um, of the puzzle to contribute to the reduction of individual traffic. Um, there are 175 um, cab stops at the moment, and they are also in the neighboring municipalities. Um, and there are two ways um, to use this uh, call shared cab. Um, one is by a two euro tariff um, for one ways, but also for three euros for a daring back trip. And um, everyone who is who wants to get picked up uh, with this call shared cap um, should be picked up within 20 minutes. So um, there is some time uh, to wait, but it's it's always within 20 minutes. And the business hours are from um, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on weekdays and from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturdays. And I have uh, two smaller uh, project, projects which I want to show you. Um, the first one is a pedestrian counting machine, uh, which is on a, a frequently used uh, bridge within the city of Weitz. And this uh, pedestrian counting machine should raise awareness to show the frequency of pedestrians and cyclists. And it is possible to show the daily and the annual values um, of the pedestrians and the cyclists. And the idea of this uh, counting machine is also to show the shop owners um, the number of possible customers which are within the city center every day. Um, the data are gathered by um, a 3D camera, but there is no storage of the face recognition, which is maybe very important for everyone. <clears throat> um, we have also a pedestrian guidance system, um, which looks like um, like on this uh, picture, and here you have a uh, uh, um, bit more detailed. So the idea is that uh, Whites is a city of short distances. Um, the whole uh, the city center is within uh, five square kilometers, and um, you can uh, reach nearly every point within the city um, within five or ten minutes walking radius. Um, and there are also some points of interest uh, marked on the pedestrian guiding system. Um, and there are also some additional uh, panels um, on each of these um, guiding system um, points, um, which shows um, the minutes and the direction arrows, um, how, how you can reach the, the most important most important points of interest. And the idea is that the system is self-explanatory, also this, the design is self-explanatory, and um, there is no additional uh, legend necessary. And it is also very important for raising awareness um, by illustrating that any uh, destination can be reached in a matter of minutes. Yeah, this was um, the most important um, examples from Bytes. Um, here you can see again um, the e-bike e sharing system there are also uh, normal bikes and here again a picture of the uh, e, e car sharing so thank you very much um yeah i hope we we see us uh, uh again in in a project uh, in the future um and i think also that it's very important to learn from each other and thank you very much for the invitation today Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, here we moving on to our last presentation for today. Uh, sustainable mobility measure in Ljubljana urban region uh, by Mr. Clement Gostic. Yes, hello to everybody. Just to find the presentation. Sorry. Can you see it? Sorry. Yes. I go back now. So yeah, okay. 
Um, good afternoon. Thank you for um, inviting us for this presentation. It is, uh, as said, uh, the final presentation of this workshop. In a way, it's a kind of to um, just to sum up um, one of the activities that we are having within on the, of course, area of sustainable mobility within Ljubljana urban region. Um, it will not be so technical presentation. It's more of a general overview of the actions we are, let's say, currently having or we are in the future uh, would be implemented within uh, within our region in the form of mobility, of course. Um, just to give you the broad overview of our region as such, uh, we are of course located in the center of Slovenia. Uh, we have the, the main capital so of, um, of Slovenia, which is of course Ljubljana, and uh, the whole territory of our region covers um, two, um, 2 thousand and a half kilometers. We include 26 municipalities, and our population of the whole region is around uh, half a million of, um, of inhabitants. Um, being located in the central part of Slovenia, of course, uh, draws, um, of course, uh, daily migration flows from within our region as well and from other um, regions also. Um, and it means that daily um, within our region, there are 120,000 um, people who are entering uh, the, the regions each day. Of course, uh, during the COVID, the, the, the numbers dropped, but uh, in the last years, the number was as such which of course uh, implicated in the various uh, problems in terms of congestion and over pollution and of course problems like that and that arise of course. Um, this is the map of the daily migration flows. You, you would see that um, due to the processes of, of centralization in the past decades, uh, there are many people who would seek their jobs from, from various other, other power parts of Slovenia and traveling daily of course to Ljubljana, which uh, makes the problems as as mentioned, of course. Um, just to draw some main uh, main transport challenges that we are dealing in this uh, in these terms uh, within mobility of our region. Um, in the sum uh, preparation for our uh, region, we made a calculation of the whole um, seats um, available within public transport uh, in the morning peak hours. And we combine this with the number of people that are entering uh, the city. We saw that we are very, very much lagging behind. Um, um, the seats that we are offering are, let's say, only 10% of the ones that we would be need in order to uh, to have, uh, let's say, uh, some proper service for the public for the public transport to be to be, uh, let's say, at least in a way as usable as um, as personal cars. Which of course then then draws us to the problem that approximately 70% of daily commute uh, to Ljubljana from our region or even from other um, areas is around 70% by a car. Um, this is, um, I mean, the number which we are of course not proud of. It's maybe the, the also in other areas as well, but this should be of course in proof with, with all the with all the SCMP and implementation processes. So the, the model split um, would be um, around 70 to 80 percent with a car, uh, 40 percent uh, public transport and bicycle and walking would in our region, of course, cover only uh, one to three percent. So you, you can see that the, the majority, of course, of travel is, is still performed uh, with, uh, with, of course, with the cars. Uh, this is where our agency comes in. Uh, we are a public entity, which is uh, besides the area of transport, also um, focusing on uh, technology, creativity, on um, environment, of course, uh, energy um, aspect as well. And we are kind of, um, you know, um, the main uh, all, um, agency between the state and the, our, our municipalities. We uh, implement projects, we draw European funds, we make uh, this regional development program. We are current, kind of the coordinating body for uh, future development in mobility um, in, in our region, of course. Um, for this reason, in the 2018, we had a chance to prepare um, sustainable urban mobility plan of the Ljubljana urban region. It was uh, actually first regional uh, do document adopted and approved by all the mayors in whole Slovenia. Um, it was followed uh, as said before from the SCMP guidelines and we kind of the use the, the knowledge we have received from uh, preparation of local SCMPs and then upgraded on the on, on the regional um, level as well. 
Um, it's not a document that, that is, of course, our guidelines to us and to our mayors and, of course, as well to the to the government. Um, where do we want to go as a region in the terms of mobility and where what are our goals um, as such uh, in this topic? Um, I wouldn't go much into the details what was written inside. I will post it later. Um, the English version is, of course, available online. I will um, post it later on the chat and you can download it and, and see what are the topics written inside and, and so on. Um, just to give you the quick overview, um, the preparation process of the, this SUMP take us, took us around one year, one year and a half. Um, in 2018, it was finally validated and now we are in the phase where we, of course, try to promote the measures, try to find the finances for, um, for it because we, as a region, um, we are not official um, entity and we kind of um, try to draw the, the money from the government and then implement into into various mobility um, activities. Um, we have also included the SUMP measures in our, into our regional development planning uh, process. So we, we're now trying to implement those activities that we have, of course, prepared within, the, within our regional SUMP. What was, um, let's say, um, the most uh, active part within the preparation of the um, our SUMP was, of course, the um, participation of, of the public as well as the SUMP process implicates its uh, majority of activities is, of course, focused from beginning until the final stages to communicate, of course, with stakeholders, with other relevant actors in the field of sustainable mobility and spatial planning. Uh, we held all those um, workshops with key stakeholders. We did uh, interviews with all 26 mayors at that time. And we discussed, of course, what is what are the main problems? What are, of course, their vision to develop sustainable mobility in the region? And at the end, we, of course, uh, very um, verified our measures with the main stakeholders. Um, just, of course, from the railways point of view, from the point of view of uh, bus public transport operators, from the point of view of the ministries. And then at the end, we came out with a set of uh, 49 groups of measures on the regional level, which are now, uh, let's say, trying to be um, uh, implemented and followed by, by our, uh, our SUMP. Um, what was one of the also good topics was the um, online survey we, we, we had held within our, of course, um, inhabitants of our region. We collected 1,600 um, responses. We were quite satisfied to see that um, we see that the mobility sector is, of course, um, involved, improving, and that the many um, inhabitants of our region want to improve, of course, the cycling uh, connectivity, cycling infrastructure, and public transport uh, as well. Um, one of the good uh, public transport uh, um, topics in our region is that, that we have this integrated um, Urbana card. The one who have traveled in Ljubljana lately, you saw that there are so also some touristic packages and you can uh, take this Urbana card on the various zones with uh, public transport in our region. It's of course also used for, let's say, for libraries, for uh, e -button, for bike or rental. So it's kind of getting, um, let's say, one-stop shop card for whole Ljubljana. Um, last year, we had a pilot call or bus service um, in one of the, in our periphery where users could um, call um, a bus, of course, you know, the service in two hours in advance and then uh, use this line to, to get closer to the city center. Uh, of course, we focus also on the multimodality beyond our, um, our, our borders. In the past five years, we had implemented uh, 13 park and, rides, uh, park and ride systems within the uh, vicinity of, of, of the city. Um, when you park your car there, you can park on the park ride for free and then you get a free uh, two rides to the city centre and backwards. So you are, you're of course, um, mitigating the negative effect of, um, of car usage in our region. Um, we also now implementing um, Open Journey Planner for the Danube region, which will um, try to combine bus and um, public transport services with, uh, with the bike services in our region. Um, to go um, on some topics on the measures on the immobility, um, as uh, said before, we have developed this uh, park and ride system and majority of those park and rides um, all also have uh, parking spaces and charging um, pillars for e-cars to be uh, to be plugged. Um, it, it wasn't for free of charge until last year and in the last year you need to pay um, 
uh, for, for, of course, for the service. And also, as in other areas, as we have seen today in uh, Croatia and in Austria, we have we have quite a um, good network of um, public and private uh, e-charging stations. And there is one network when you can, of course, uh, it's an app where you can have all the data about if the chargings are free or not. And so it's it's more or less similar as in other as in other areas. Um, we are quite proud on one of the measures we have developed. Uh, let's I, I, I would say for, so yeah, five years ago. Um, it's called Avant go e-card uh, car sharing system. They are located in the four cities in Slovenia, Ljubljana, Kran, Maribor, and Muska, Sabota. In overall, they are um, around 60 stations and, um, and 25 of them is located within our, our region. And it's a system where you um, apply for it, of course, and you and you can you can you have various um, let's say um, possibilities how to pay and and what is the, the service would be like. They have five different models of, of cars, but on general, I would say that the service, if you want to you have your car for one day, it would charge you around 30 euros for 24 hours. But if you just have a ride for within a city, let's say in, in a half an hour, it would take you around three to four euros. It's it's quite it's quite well used uh, service. I said before, it's uh, it's instead of the second car, which would be in the household, and also many companies are having it as a, as a service for their instead of taxis as well. So it's quite good service. You can check it out on the internet even even more. Um, then measures on immobility. Uh, since we are expanding our pedestrian area in city center of Ljubljana quite um, quite quite largely in, in the past decade, uh, there are now six um, Cavalier electric vehicles operating within the pedestrian area. They are very very well used. They are free of charge, and you can call them, uh, and they would uh, the drivers would stop and drive you. Let's say whatever you want to go uh, within the, the pedestrian area. And but on majority, it's more prioritized for the elderly and for the ones who are in need of such service. And also it kind of goes uh, good for the for the city image and for the tourists as well. So it's a good, uh, good um, service. Uh, we are now thinking about the expansion of this service to the main area of clinics in Ljubljana. So you could be um, taken for around one kilometer from city center to the uh, clinics for free of charge. And this is a good expansion of the of the service. Um, well, what is more, we have this uh, in the city center. They are uh, this urban, uh, we call it urban train, which is uh, available for tourists to, to ride. For eight euros, you can go on a circular cruise for one hour around the city center. You can see the majority of uh, um, city attractions. Um, and also our public fleet, there are 50 cars, some um, e cars available for um, our fleet to be used by city administration. It's shown as a good, uh, good, let's say, image uh, and uh, for others as, as well to see that e-cars are, of course, getting onto the market and they are getting very, very much, of course, uh, popular. Um, what is more, um, just um, due to many years, we had to try to change uh, one area. It's a Slovenska street, which is crossing, dividing our city center on a half. Um, if you would see the picture on your upper left side, it was a former quite um, very used um, avenue for cars and buses. And we had changes uh, with uh, some pilot activities during the European Mobility Week. And now it's available only for its sh shared space principle um, on the broader perspective. It's only used for buses and for uh, pedestrian and cyclists. So it's a good example of, and we like this 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 topic. I mean, it, it has draw many attention. It was, it was very well accepted. Um, just two slides about the future. Um, in the future, we are, of course, trying to implement and improve the services on the on the railway sector as, as well. We try to upgrade the railway lines that are some of part of TNT uh, railway corridor. Some are not, but we try to find investments uh, in those topics as well. We need to undergo the upgrade of the Ljubljana train station. The one, the ones who have traveled here in the past years with the train, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and what we are also trying to achieve is a harmonization of bus and train timetables. Uh, they are harmonized in a way, but sometimes we we have quite a, a lot of services in the mornings, but then during the evening the services are I don't know only one one uh, train per hour, so the services are not that good uh, for the ones who are not commuting to the to the 
city center. Um, in the future, we would focus even more on the cycling connectivity within our region. Uh, during the SUMP, we had made a plan for the national, regional and local uh, cycling infrastructure. Of course, we are now uh, partly uh, building the, the, building the, the infrastructure. Uh, we are now si uh, signing some uh, cycling route within Eurovelo 9 route that, that is passing Ljubljana. And what we also try to do is now, of course, uh, bring the fleet of uh, e-bikes within the region and to have kind of uh, e-bike service between the municipalities, uh, mostly to be used, of course, by the by the uh, daily migrants and and for tourists as well. Um, that is more, uh, most from my side, what we have seen, what we have learned that, of course, uh, the multi-level policy integration is very uh, much, uh, I mean, in use for the future development of the sustainable mobility and um, of course uh, only having a document it's not the way to go you also have to implement things and try various smart measures in order that the public see that you are proactive and that the mobility is of course sustainable mobility is the way to go within the sustainable region and of course to mitigate all the negative impacts of the motorized transport that's all from my side uh, thank you very much i will as i said post the link to SUMP on the chat and you can download and check it out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all presenters. Uh, are there any questions for any of the presentation uh, that we had today from, from the audience? This is your time. I have one question. Yes. Uh, I'm very interesting. Uh, from guys from the Energy Institute, Hrvoje Požar. Can you explain, you are speak about uh, electric charger vehicles, but uh, only about electric cars. What do you think, uh, what it will be with the transport with electric buses uh, in Croatia? What uh, what I think, because I, I, I know that uh, our public transport, Promet Split, are uh, prepared preparing one study and also preparing public procurement for the buying electric buses and uh, what I think about the demand about electric electricity and which charger it will be the useful the, the best solution for us from the local government what we need maybe to, to co-finance and uh, some any other plans or something like that thank you Uh, I, I I think I, I can try to to provide the answer. Uh, yes, we were talking about electric vehicles only, but electric cars, as you said, mm, with electric cars, it's more let's say easier, clear because of um, payback periods, uh, because uh, the price of cars are uh, the price gap between conventional uh, cars and electric vehicles is every year less and less and we can expect in few years to be the equal maybe uh, and now we have more or less clear picture about payback period about savings uh, in money uh, when we buy electric car but for the buses um, i think this this uh, investment is uh, much much uh, bigger and the price gap i think is uh, the electric bus costs maybe two or three times more maybe or two times more so um, it, it's not um, um, in 15 or 20 years uh, the there cannot be payback period uh, so that means uh, there is need for co-financing uh, and support uh, the electric buses. They are not now uh, even. Uh, I was taking a look. I think even in in, in China they need uh, subsidies for electric buses uh, to to make them uh, feasible economically. So definitely. Now and a few years more, uh, we will need to to co-finance and subsidize the electric buses, but uh, the the environmental benefits are not discussable. We know it's it, it's a great way, and in future we will have 
I hope more and more electric electric buses. But um, I heard about this project in uh, Split. I'm not sure about the the details. How how many of uh, electric buses will be included there? Um, first of all, I, I would say there's a need from the operator to analyze the, the routes uh, of all buses and to find the most appropriate routes for the, for these buses and to calculate uh, what's the range for these buses and then uh, so so we, we, which routes are suitable to to be electrified maybe some routes uh, some li lines routes some some bus lines uh, have maybe uh, let's say stops for one hour or two hours uh, and these are suitable to to charge a little bit more for more kilometers and some some lines are uh, going through the city all the day and maybe there's no enough uh, range for these buses so this this let's say a small study or analysis should be done to find the most appropriate and then um, for charging of course the the best way is uh, always uh, that's charging process should be as long as possible. This means uh, less power and long charging process. So when the bus is not used during the night because uh, high power the, uh, will be the more cost for, for network costs, for gauge power and for the capacity of the electricity, there will be high costs. But uh, on the other hand, um, I, I could not say not now directly which which charging station should be should be uh, in installed. D depends, of course, on the battery capacity and needs of specific bus. Maybe maybe can find I can find some uh, uh, cases study cases. I think there were some in in Czech Republic. There were some. Uh, case studies and some uh, uh, papers written from that I can share with you uh, about this uh, uh, ab about this let's say uh, no some project thank you on your answer Thank you. Uh, I can see a hand raised. Uh, Silvio, do you have a question? Yes, yes, it's a, it's a question and maybe also a, a kind of remark, but um, a question I, I invite Tomislav to, to, to answer or any, anyone else. Uh, who, well, we heard uh, some very interesting pilot projects in, um, in different areas, so from cities to, to urban, uh, to, to rural areas and so on. Uh, I, I think that uh, in the near future uh, we need to upscale the, uh, the, this to, to a larger extent, not only pilot projects uh, and uh, I think countries uh, such as uh, Finland uh, showed uh, the way uh, th there is a huge potentiality for e-vehicles and I think this, uh, this uh, is for sure the, the future. But uh, in order to upscale, uh, the question is, uh, uh, this is a policy mostly related to urban areas or, um, or rural as well or there is no uh, no differences. Uh, let me say, let's say to to uh, upscale uh, really the and, and change completely the way we we, we move. Uh, um, uh, is it something that we have to stick in 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 starting from cities from big cities or this is not really the case and uh, every every place around uh, Europe is is suitable to 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 host. Let me say this this change. Uh, in mobility. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm, if I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure if I if I get 
correctly the the question. But I, I mean, the the the, um, the change will be driven from uh, uh, by the cities, the urban areas, or uh, do you think there is no real connection between urban and rural, and the vehicles can be a suitable solution for any 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 places? Um, I, I, I think for, for any places that uh, um, in the uh, next maybe decade we will see the electric vehicles replacing the internal combustion um, uh, vehicles, cars for, for sure, but in every place, in uh, rural and in urban. Uh, in um, so you, you you don't feel there is an economy of scales in in urban areas for for infrastructure I mean uh, to to be much more equipped let's say or but uh, for when we talk about uh, charging infrastructure and charging of electric vehicles uh, our projections say that maybe eighty percent or more or eighty five percent in future the charging processes will be at home. So in uh, rural, that means only maybe 15 or 20 percent will be on public infrastructure. And uh, now in these years, OK, we are talking a lot about this public infrastructure, but in, in future, the mostly the most of charging processes will be at home. So in rural uh, areas, this is the less problem, maybe because there are more family houses, more uh, it's much more easy to to uh, plug your car during the night and charge it. In urban area, it is more challenging, especially uh, where many uh, uh, apartments with, with, with many uh, flats and there are no maybe parking spaces in old urban areas, no uh, parking sp spaces uh, suitable to install the charger there. So there will be need uh, to, to more public infrastructure. And uh, also other thing is uh, in urban areas, uh, we need more infrastructure that is a uh, base for the for the other mobility uh, mobility solutions, mobility services. So in our maybe we will have, a f for example, for e-taxis, they need a fast charging infrastructure and for uh, a car sharing systems and other 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 uh, mobility services that will use the charging infrastructure. But uh, for let's say uh, um, everyday commute uh, between I don't know 20 or 50 kilometers between rural and urban um, areas, uh, there will be no need to extra public uh, public charging stations because the the range of the electric cars is uh, now uh, almost uh, not almost but it will be almost li like the the internal combustion ones their cars more can can uh, go more than 30 uh, 300 kilometers and it's completely enough for for all needs we have but uh, we were talking maybe uh, the different policy policies that we need uh, to implement from the national level and to from the local authorities. I, I don't know it was the question in that sense. Yeah, thank you. I'm fully satisfied about your answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? OK, if not, um, just a few questions from my side to summarize today's meeting. As we all see, today's workshops were oriented on a regional and local level on sustainable mobility uh, development. Uh, we heard so many uh, great good practices from regions in Croatia, cities in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Austria and Slovenia. So my main question for all the speakers is uh, what are the key tools? What are the general key tools for action to facilitate the implementation and development of e mobility that uh, mostly regional and local authorities can uh, implement? What are your uh, main recommendations for this? Uh, I believe during our first presentation, Mr. Bruno gave a few propositions. So could you maybe remind your recommendation, Tomislav, um, also? 
Uh, yes, I was, I was, uh, I was talking yes about these uh, measures. What I think that local or regional government uh, authorities should do, uh, for example. Uh, but I, I don't. I'm not sure what are all the powers and what are tools of the local and regional authorities to do it. For example, my, my question or idea was just uh, providing and um, let's say identify the locations for uh, charging stations and uh, to give uh, to uh, to offer these locations, let's say on 20 years or 30 years, to the private sector to build uh, to install charge charging stations. This is one one thing. And maybe if we are talking about co-financing, maybe co-financing some uh, expenses related to to grid connection, which can be very high, something like that, or maybe other other uh, other measures that are I think in the hands of local and regional authorities to uh, to maybe um, let's say promote promote electric vehicles to give some uh, exclusive rights for uh, uh, electric vehicles we know about exclusive zones low emission zones or uh, uh, free parkings other benefits something like that so thank you uh, any other pr pr proposition from other speakers maybe yes May I? Oh, okay yes. sorry martin please <laughs> You first, okay. okay. So who's gonna do it? Uh, so maybe just to add to something that Tomislav mentioned, uh, the idea would be to develop the investment concepts. So to identify pos possible opportunities for the private sector in order to create some kind of investment portfolio on the local level, which could be interesting to the Mm, entities from private sector then to invest to, to give uh, to give uh, opportunity to them to get involved because uh, it seems to me that uh, this is quite a big opportunities for many SMEs who are maybe not directly involved into transport sector but have any uh, other experience in in other sectors so to to um, educate them about the possibilities to to somehow uh, start uh, local uh, employment and to to gather the know-how from develop, more developed regions in order to to be able to uh, act on local level. Uh, as as I gave the example of this uh, manufacturing of of conversion of the vehicle, uh, this could be done with many other uh, small scale projects, and also for bigger uh, bigger entities who have. Uh, who have the strength to 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 maybe to to uh, gather the knowledge and then to even uh, offer the the final solution on a national level and both on a EU level. So the idea would be to support the private sector in order to implement um, best available technologies uh, firstly on a local level and then to expand on a wider market. That's my idea about possible possible. Uh, opportunities and also what Thomson mentioned actually to somehow positively discriminate the EVs and other sustainable ways of mobility, also sharing system, parking park and ride and so on in order to to penetrate as much as possible into everyday life. Uh, so people would uh, be familiar with these technologies and would uh, then desire to, to uh, have them as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Martin. So, uh, at first, from the local government, it, it is necessary to, to create in a frame framework what we want to do. Uh, in Croatia, our BDP is not too much high, and especially now when the tourism are going fall down, especially in this year, uh, the, the the it's huge problem for us. It's uh, expensive of electric vehicles. Uh, we still have our national fund for the protection of the environment where they are co-financing about 10,000 euros per uh, electric vehicle if you buy it. Uh, even that, uh, uh, I think that uh, our public government and the public company are not uh, going buying electric cars. 
So for us from the local government, uh, also we must work and prepare uh, uh, on s make some subvention to 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 um, our SMEs have uh, uh, strong capacity and uh, strong uh, better involvement in in uh, preparing of that kind of the project. Uh, here in Croatia, we have centralized situation about uh, our national electric uh, service company and also they are uh, very strong involved in in uh, these electric chargers and uh, they have come um, subvention from eu for uh, i think one or two year 2023 they will uh, uh, stop cover the cost of uh, charging so we will see uh, how much it will be cost the, the the price i don't know whether and how much it cost uh, is it free charging in every of this uh, area or you're paying also also we will see what it will be in that part and how it will be developed and creating that framework uh, of these services on our market if you understand me uh, Yes. Maybe, maybe it will be easier on Croatian. Sorry of my bad English. Vedran, mm -hmm. uh, ne znam koliko košta kod vas uh, cijena koštanja uh, punjenja električnog vozila I, i mislim da će i sama ta naplata električnog punjenja dovesti do određenih promjena. Da li ćemo možda imati previše punjača s obzirom na trenutno stanje s brojem vozila električnih u Republici Hrvatskoj? Okay, uh, thank you. So I was not, uh, uh, I, I did not understand the question at, at first. So actually at the moment the, the tariff is uh, as uh, in, the, in the rest of the country. So uh, there are some um, players, let's say in the market who have, uh, who, who have uh, charging for free and there are others who have tariffs uh, which is commercial. As you, you, you know, probably in the other countries as well, as some of the some of the operators in the market are uh, from from other countries such as petrol and and uh, Croatian telecom which actually operates in the other market and there are tariffs which uh, which are commercial and also now uh, the the Croatian power utility HEP has introduced identification of the users uh, and definitely in some some uh, longer perspective this would also be charged so uh, as as Tomislav uh, mentioned, I believe that also part of the great great uh, part of the uh, charging is going to happen in home, in in private locations, either in home, in either in uh, offices, premises, because uh, slow charging with with low powers. This is something which actually enables us to have the vehicles as long as possible connected to the charger and to provide additional services to the grid, because. Once when we'll be able to exchange uh, both information and energy, so vehicle to grid uh, solutions, then uh, vehicles would not be uh, considered uh, anymore as a, just a burden to the grid, but also to support the, the storage of the energy, uh, primarily from the renewables, of course, and also to, to be able to balance somehow a, a grid because uh, we would like to incentivize uh, users to, to use um, charging when grids uh, favor it. So it's uh, possible to have the vehicle, I don't know, the vehicles are for 95% connected to the to the charger as they are 95% uh, of the time they are parked. In this time, we have the communication between the vehicle and the grid. This is the, the mind point of view. I agree completely with uh, Vedran. This is uh, the energy aspects of the immobility, but uh, I didn't want to, to touch it in this uh, workshop, but it's definitely correct. So if I want to go back to the, what uh, Martin said, uh, the our uh, power utility company has maybe the, the biggest um, uh, network of EV chargers and uh, the charging is still for free. Why is it for free? Because they are still, it's a big company, but they are still not too brave to uh, put uh, charging. Because if you charge something, you need to provide the whole service, which is very complicated. So 
you need uh, the uh, um, to establish the billing schemes, the identification, the uh, customer service. So if something is not working, uh, you you need to call someone and to provide uh, the whole customer service. And this is the reason why I said it's not good for the local uh, authorities to uh, to install uh, public chargers because it's very complicated business. So. But these uh, uh, charging stations that will be uh, established by uh, power utility or others that we were talking about, they will be good for uh, for uh, some uh, traveling and longer trips. But uh, now in uh, regional aspects or local, especially for example in Split Dalmatia County, I think we need first of all uh, education of uh, of uh, business sector and education of uh, uh, all, 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 all stakeholders and participants in this process. Um, I mean, uh, we have to talk about destination charging, for example, for all small uh, uh, households who, who are renting apartments during the tourist season, they would need to have a small, small charger, but it's not its investment of uh, 500 euro maybe, but uh, to have a wide, very wide, a long, uh, 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 a huge number of these uh, connection ports, let's say, so you can charge everywhere. And uh, we need education to, to educate about uh, benefits of this. Yes, that was my point of view. So to to uh, to be able to involve all the all the uh, participants in this uh, energy uh, transformation in in transport sector, and to motivate uh, motivate them to to be promoters of the of the green green mobility. Let's say uh, so when the the, the uh, even the, the children in high schools are talking about this technology as as cool as as some futuristic, but but even even today available. This is the the aim that we we want to achieve. Because, as I said, for in, for instance, in the uh, island of Kirk, uh, one day these these pupils are going to be uh, the the buyers are going to be the users of the the sharing systems and so on, and they they are going to be decision makers who are uh, on the market. That's why it's important to educate and to uh, to provide the support to the final user who is not necessarily technically educated. I see people are leaving, leaving this workshop. Maybe we yes. are, our discussion is maybe not <laughs> interesting. <laughs> no, no, that's that's because we uh, over exceed our time for today, but I believe this, this discussion is very, very uh, interesting. Uh, thank you all for 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 giving us your inputs, uh, but I believe that we have to finish our workshop for today and maybe uh, continue this discussion on the la later meetings and some other cooperations. Uh, so uh, from my side, big thank you for uh, for ICAP team for organizing this session and uh, to develop all of, of this and to share all of these good practices. Um, and thank you for all the presenters to 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 present today uh, and i hope we can um, continue this discussion later on